So back in 2016, Nvidia came out with the very well received GTX 10 series. This was the Pascal lineup of GPUs and in there was a mid range card that really was punching above its weight class and that was the GTX 1070. I almost said 970 there. This was the GTX 1070 which in my main rig as well as many other people's rigs, the 1070 did in fact replace the 970. Now one of the big upgrades other than just sheer performance was you went from the 70 series, the 970 had four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which was really only three and a half gigabytes that were really usable, but I digress. This thing has eight gigabytes, and that was a big step up for NVIDIA, especially because AMD had been packing on uh, higher amounts of VRAM in their GPUs for a little while at that point, whereas NVIDIA tended to go with less VRAM, but better overall performance from the core. The 1070 sort of did both of those things. So now that we are almost a full four and a half years removed from the 1070's launch, I figure we may as well go back and take a look at how the 1070 is holding up over four years later in some modern titles and whether this is still a viable solution to those of you looking for a GPU that is good at 1080p gaming and maybe even some 1440p gaming. So let's take a look at the 1070 in 2020. Now, if you caught my last video, and by the way, if you're not subbed, go ahead and hit sub because I have more of these EVGA B-Stock cards, but this is an EVGA B-Stock GPU. I took a look at uh, the card in general, looked at the quality of the card, tore down the card, uh, took off the cooler, looked at the uh, condition of the PCB and everything else in that last video. And I'll try to remember to put a card for that video in case you're interested in taking a look at it. But basically, this thing was actually in really nice condition and comes with a one-year warranty if you're getting it from EVGA's B-Stock stock website and I got this thing at $180 on their midweek madness sale that happens every Wednesday. So if you're looking for a really good price on a 1070, uh, that's right in line with what you can get on eBay. The difference is I have a one year warranty with my card. But the question of course that we're answering today in several games that are uh, more modern, not necessarily all 2020 titles, but all modern games that are popular here in 2020 is whether or not this thing can still do a good job gaming if you're looking for a GPU to pick up that's a little bit cheaper than some of the current generation offerings. But before we hop into those benchmarks, I do want to mention the test bench in general. Obviously, we are featuring the GTX 1070, but also we have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 2666 megahertz, and that's a limitation of the i5-10400, which is six cores, 12 threads running at the stock settings uh, for that CPU, which obviously being a locked SKU, there's not really a whole lot you can play with anyways with some of those settings in the BIOS, but we're just running it at bare bones stock and uh, that 32 gigabytes of memory. 1070 uh, should be a pretty good test bench, so let's check out the numbers. Starting off with Fortnite on the low graphics preset, and I always pick low because that usually lines up a little bit better with what a lot of uh, pros are playing with Fortnite. But what we see here is an incredibly high average frame rate of 250 FPS, a 1% 1 low of 144, and a 0.1% low there of 63. So this title is extremely a good experience here on the low preset. And if you like some eye candy, you have tons of headroom Room to either up the resolution, up the detail, or possibly even do both of those things. Moving on to Star Wars Squadrons, this is the high preset at 1080p, and it's a similar affair here where we have plenty of headroom to go to a higher resolution or just more eye candy. Seeing an average FPS here of 158 with a 1% 1 low of 117 and a 0.1% low of 105. And this game has actually really impressed me with its level of uh, at least seemingly just optimization where it actually just runs really well on a lot of different hardware. So EA did a really nice job getting this game to run really well on a variety of different hardware configurations. And the 1070 being still a pretty strong card here, even in 2020, does an excellent job with this title at 1080p. But then we move over to a single player game that is pretty notorious for kind of being all over the map with its frame rates. And that's at least true of the benchmark as well as uh, depending on where you are in the actual game, you'll get a variety of different frame rates. So that's why we see an average FPS here of 65, but the 1% low is down there at 31 and 0.1% low is down there at 28. Basically through this benchmarking run, we see some pretty high FPS numbers where we see 70s or even low 80s in the frame rate. But then in other areas, 
areas of the run, we see the, the FPS really drop down there to about the low 30s with an occasional dip into the 20s. So this is kind of all over the place. And if I were running this game with a 1070, I would probably knock down the settings to the medium preset and roll with that just so you can make sure that you stay above that 30 FPS mark. But definitely a very playable experience on this title. Borderlands 3 gives us a little bit more consistency here where we see an average frame rate in the benchmark of 74, a 1% low of 59, and a 0.1% low of 52. And with all those numbers sort of in a somewhat narrow range, what that's telling us is we're getting a very consistent frame rate. So you're not seeing stutters, you're not seeing big drops in your frame rate at all, which does make this a very consistent and enjoyable experience. And finally, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, where we see an average frame rate on the high preset at 1080p of 40 FPS, 1% low there at 28 and a 0.1% low at 23. And similar to Borderlands 3, this is a pretty consistent experience where there's maybe a little bit more of a noticeable drop from time to time, but it's not to the point where it's gonna really detract from the gameplay itself. And if that does concern you a little bit, those occasional drops below 30 FPS that really only ever happen for a split second, you do have some room being on the high uh, settings in general where you can drop those settings down and get down to more like medium settings and you should raise that FPS enough where you're not gonna notice drops below 30 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2 does do a pretty good job staying consistent with the frame times though, so you don't notice big jumps or big drops in that frame time, which is where you really get the jarring stutter that we see elsewhere in games. So the GTX 1070, if you can get it at that 180-ish dollar price, which is roughly where they are at on eBay, as well as the EVGA B-Stock website during Midweek Madness, if you can find one there, and links down below in case you're interested in checking out current pricing and availability, but that's a really good price for a 1070 because a 1070 is gonna give you performance very, very similar to a GTX 1660 Ti, which right now are still about 80 to $100 more than a GTX. TX 1070. Now, if you're on the EVGA B stock website, definitely take a look at the 1660 Ti's as well to see if you can find one for as cheap or nearly as cheap as the 1070. But also keep in mind, the 1070 does have a little bit more VRAM. So if you're doing anything that's VRAM limited, maybe the 1070 is even a better option than the newer 1660 Ti. That is uh, purely more on a case by case basis. But generally speaking, when you're comparing a 1660 Ti to a 1070, take whichever one is a little bit cheaper because you're getting very, very similar performance to the point where uh, in a lot of benchmarks I've looked over, they sort of trade blows back and forth. So if you can save 20 or $40 on a B-Stock sale uh, with the 1070 over the 1660 Ti, it's probably worth it to go ahead and get the 1070. But of course, I do want to hear from you guys out there, especially those of you that are still using the GTX 1070. Are you still happy with this card? Are you looking for an upgrade? You know, what's your experience with your GTX 1070s here in 2020? Let us know all your thoughts down below in those comments. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.